to another edition of Inside Medicine. I am your host, Doug Geinzer, and we are here in the studio today with Dr. Matthew Schwartz, a partner and a radiation oncologist from Comprehensive Cancer Centers of Nevada. Uh, for those of you new to the show, uh, this show broadcasts every single Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning, and we like to bring in the movers and shakers of healthcare, those doing innovative things, things in the healthcare, uh, education space, medical tourism, and bringing patients in from out of market. And today we've got uh, Dr. Schwartz with us to the studio, so welcome. Thank you so much for having me. So you guys had a great event last night. I think you had about 200 people in the house, uh, an expansion that went on over at the Siena campus of St. Rose Dominican Hospitals. Tell us a little bit about what happened last night. Well, we were very fortunate, and I was amazed at the strong turnout. We had a lot of uh, patients and government officials and, and really leaders in the healthcare industry that attended the event. And uh, it was a very strong support of what we're doing at, at Comprehensive, I believe, and uh, we were very, very pleased. I have to say I was a little bit nervous. I think we may have had quorum for our Nevada <laughs> legislature there. You guys you guys stacked the House with legislators. You had uh, Senate Majority Leader Michael Roberson. You had Senator uh, Joyce Woodhouse. You had Assembly people. You had Secretary of State Barbara Sagafsky there. Uh, absolutely amazing turnout. Really, it was. And, and her story was just so powerful to hear that. I had actually never... I had, uh, knew about that until I heard it from her, and she just kind of went through her experience of being treated and how she felt like she didn't need to leave and that she wanted to stay in Nevada to get treatment, and she's so happy that she stayed. And like, what, what more powerful thing could you say than that? So, so for the viewers, thank her for that. Yeah, so the viewers that that. Uh, that don't know, so uh, Barbara Sagavsky, who is our Secretary of State, uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer a ways back, and she chose not to leave Nevada, which is absolutely critical. You look around this town, and we have some of the best uh, doctors in the entire world practicing right here, uh, and, and unfortunately, we got a bad rap years back. Where that common joke, and we we really need to kill this joke. Where do people go when they get sick? McCarran, and uh, that's just not the case anymore. I think uh, Secretary of State uh, Sagafsky really showed that. Tell us how important is it to be around loved ones during that healing process? You see it all day long, and and why is that so important? Because from a from a patient's point of view, they're they're fighting the cancer, and you know we're fighting it with radiation and, and chemotherapy and surgery and the showing up every day. And it's not just the physical part, but it's the emotional part, it's the spiritual part, and uh, it's hard. And they really, they need their support system to get through it. You know, it's not just medications. It's like you need somebody to help you sometimes to even drive you to your treatments every day or take care of you when you're sick and, and be there for you. And so from a patient's point of view, to be able to stay at home, this is what we hear over and over again, is is really, really key to getting and, better. And comprehensive cancer, you guys have done an utterly amazing job in your growth. I've watched you grow up over the years, and you've got, what, 47 practitioners over there right now. Give us a high level. Tell us about comprehensive cancer centers and kind of where you started and where you are today, because you've got a, quite a story to tell to tell everybody out there. So I've personally been with Comprehensive since 2006. I'm, as I told you before, I'm, I'm actually from Las Vegas. And yeah, yeah. I went to Valley High School and UNLV and med school uh, at the University of Nevada. And I left to do my training and I actually chose to come back because I wanted to work for Comprehensive because it was just the best group of, of oncologists in town and just a good group of people. And I, I could feel it. Sometimes you feel it when good things are going on. And, then, and I think time has shown that. So I've been with the group for, for 10 years. And if you look at the growth and the things that we've been able to do as far as expanding our clinical trials, we now have 170 clinical wow. trials open for patients. I mean, that is a this very strong statement in itself that people don't need to leave. You can get the state-of-the-art care here uh, as part of, you know, since I've been here, I helped bring in the, the Las Vegas CyberKnife, which is really the most advanced form of radiation treatments that, that a patient can get. And we were able to bring that along with our partnership with someone in the hospital and bring that to Las Vegas. So we brought in more advanced technologies. We've advanced our partnerships. We've increased our clinical trials. We've gotten bigger. We've brought in other types of, of doctors to really all, it's all about the patient. We want the patient to get the best treatments, not have to leave. And, uh, and be comfortable. So last night, what were you all celebrating? It seemed you had 200 people there, a uh, lot of activity going on, tours of the facility. Uh, what were you celebrating? What was the, the big uh, ordeal? There? So our big news yesterday is that we completed our expansion at our Siena office, which is where I'm based. And what we did was we expanded out um, our physical space. So we added about 5,000 square feet of space, and we now have about 18,000 square feet there. That allowed us to increase our infusion center so if you guys can bring up a picture, you can yeah, see yeah. it. Scott, and, uh, bring up that picture of the infusion center. It's a 
where they've got the chairs in there. Yeah, and then advance to that next one. I think this really tells a good story. And talk a little bit about the Infusion Center itself so and why the, this is important. Yeah, the Infusion Center is where patients uh, receive systemic therapy like chemotherapy or, or targeted therapy. And by uh, giving us more space, we can treat more patients, number one. And number two, we have been able to enhance their experience. So you can see in the picture, we now have tablets at every infusion chair. The room is bright and airy so that the patients feel comfortable. It's a comfortable environment where you're getting the right treatment. And that was allowed by by us expanding and, and updating our experience and, and making the facility more modern and and it's just a good thing for everyone. Let's go ahead. So, so, since we're on here, Scott, let's roll through some of the other photos and and talk to, for those of, that were not able to attend last night, here's your virtual tour of the go. facility. Here's a little <laughs> bit of what you missed. So tell us a little bit about this equipment. What makes it unique? And gosh, I wish we had that photo of your superheroes up on the wall. That was probably the coolest thing that I saw there. It really was cool. So we'll, yeah, let's go through it. This is a, uh, a CAT scanner. And I think most people, a lot of people have seen that, but the big donut is basically where the, the patient goes in and it, it takes images that can be used both for diagnosing cancer mm -hmm. as well as for planning the radiation treatments. And so what I do, I'm a radiation oncologist. As part of uh, a patient's treatment plan, they'll typically get a CAT scan such as this. We'll often use their other diagnostic imaging such as PET scans or MRIs. And then we use those images and that data to help custom design the best radiation treatment plan that we can so that we really target and kill the cancer and not hurt the patient's normal tissues and not make them sick. There's no uh, room for error. There's no room for error. And yeah. we're talking, you know, in the millimeters range of precision and everything has to be perfect and we make it so that the patient gets the best treatment. What's possible. cool last night, you kind of equated it to gaming and uh, the yeah. gamification of delivering healthcare. And I, I, it's, it's pretty cool to be able to do that every day. It really is. And, and it makes my job very rewarding because I, I really enjoy that. I like working with the high technology and I love working with the computers and we have a physicist that works with us and a dosimetrist and a whole team of people really that are all working together to help the patient fight. The so it's cancer. not just you. It's not just me. I have, <laughs> yeah, I'm the guy you see, but there's a whole team behind me that are really, really smart people and work hard and dedicated and all working together. To How many people patients. work out of your space over there? Oh, I'm going to say we probably have 50 employees yeah. there total. Wow. Yeah. And how many does Comprehensive as a whole? You guys have grown a lot. So what does that look it's, like today? It's really unbelievable. In the last year, we've added the, the pulmonary doctors and we've had additional medical oncologists and and we have breast surgeons and medical oncology and radiation oncology. I, I would say we probably have about 600 employees. Oh, my gosh. And a total of 55 providers between the doctors and our advanced practice providers. That's huge. And yeah, so we're getting really, really big. I love watching the growth. Scott, let's advance to the next photo. Oh, my favorite. So this That's is a big the, toy. <laughs> this is a big toy. Exactly. This is called a linear accelerator. So this is what we use actually to treat the radiation treatments and uh, treat the radi radiation patients. And the patient lies on the table. And what happens is the machine kind of rotates around the patient and delivers focused radiation beams. So I, it's like a, it's like a laser of yeah. uh, in high intensity pinpoint radiation. And uh, because the technology is so advanced now, we can actually kind of curve the radiation right around the vital organs and really target the cancer cells. That's cool. It's Talk about cool. the, we don't have a photo of it, but the, the masks that you mold to each individual patient in the, the little bean bag that's in the back. Tell yeah, us the importance of that. Right there in the picture. <laughs> um, so what they are is so patients that have tumors such as in, in the brain or the head and neck, those are areas with a lot of really important stuff that we have to be careful when we're trying to treat a tumor right next to a vital organ like your brain stem, for example. So what we do in order to do that is we make a mask and the mask looks kind of like a hockey mask. You saw it last oh, night. Oh, yeah, it was it's pretty cool. plastic, and it's custom made to mold around the patient's head, and um, it's like a mesh. You yeah. can see through it, and you can breathe through it, but it's kind of tight, and, and then they wear that a couple of minutes every day. Uh -huh. And it's kind of, from a patient's point of view, it's scary, and it's not very comfortable. And so one of the things that our chief therapist, Helen, did was is she had all these hidden talents that I didn't know about, artistic talents. I was blown away, and one day I walk in, and I see all these masks, and the masks are like superhero masks. It's like mm -hmm. from Star Wars and superheroes, <laughs> and each one looks like a, like a superhero. It definitely breaks the ice for those yeah, coming, walking in there, cool probably experience. a little intimidated. You can't walk in there and not yeah. smile when you see that, because it's just really, really cool. Yeah, that was awesome. So these little beanbag things, what do they do? So the beanbag things are an immobilization device called a vac lock. And so mm -hmm. what they are is each one of these is custom made for each patient. And mm -hmm. so it basically wraps around you. And then when you pull the air out, it gets hard. And then and so when the patient comes in every day, they have their own beanbag uh -huh. and they lie in that and it kind of supports them and make sure that you're in the right position. 
Hey, there's some of the hair. Oh, there you go. Like a, you found like a, it. Great find. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. All right. Yeah. So this is Helen. I'm giving her a shout out. My chief therapist. Great job, Helen. And she made all these herself and uh, very, very talented and uh, very, very cool. So talk about the the average treatment. Obviously, it differs patient to patient. The average treatment. How how many times do they come to see you? How many times are they hooked into this machine? And talk about how that mask gets bolted down too. That was a little freaky when you talked about that last night. It is, and, and um, so the treatments differ depending on the type of cancer and the stage, et cetera. Some patients get one treatment. Mm-hmm. Some patients come in every day for eight and a half weeks of treatment. Oh, my gosh. So this is a wide range. Right. But in general, the treatment itself, this process, takes in the minutes. So yeah. their patients are in, our, in, the, in the room for about 10 minutes a day, mm-hmm. and they're usually given every day, Monday through Friday, where the weekends are off. Yeah. Um, and it's somewhere between one week or like one single treatment for some, some, some cancers yep. all the way up to eight and a half weeks of treatment. But let's give you an example, like for head and neck cancer, since we're talking about mm-hmm. the mask, it's typically every day for seven weeks of treatment. And so what will happen usually is the patient will lie down on the table. They'll put the mask on the patient that's custom made for that patient. It clips into the table so that you can't move your head. So literally during the treatments, you're, you're kind of stuck. Of course. There. Yeah. And then the first thing that happens is, on the machine, there's these little um, arms that come out, and it's called a comb beam CT. And so the first thing that happens is the machine spins around mm-hmm. and is actually taking comb beam images. It's called image-guided radiation therapy. Uh-huh. And so the reason that we do that is that that way we know every day that we're locked onto the target. And yep. So by doing that, we're, we're down to several millimeter precision. I check those images every day. And then once that's done... Then the actual treatment start. The machine rotates around you and, and delivers the radiation beams. But the whole process takes about 10 minutes. That's cool stuff. So you've got an operation at St. Rose Siena that we all toured last night. You all seem to have a great relationship, not only with Dignity, but really every single hospital system in Las Vegas. You've got a, a, a branch or a campus on their campus. Are they all the same or do they differ from campus to campus? They're all different. And so it's interesting because a lot of our facilities are kind of on the campus. We're not technically part of the hospital, but we're, we're adjacent and we're close. So yep. in Las Vegas, we've been very lucky because these relationships have worked well for us as well as for them, as well as for the patients, because there's different strengths and weaknesses in, in every organization. And by working with everyone and everyone working together, we can all move towards a common goal. And so we've been able to accomplish a lot of really great things for the community by working with different partners and not, and being open to working with everyone. That's how we were able to get things done. And and that's really to the advantage of the patients. So is it fair to say that you're really the outsourced cancer group to the majority of the hospital? So if I go to a hospital and I'm not certain what the heck's going on and they say, we think you may have cancer. Do you or one of your partners round there and yeah, and so between all the, the um, 45 doctors and comprehensive, we pretty much are on staff at almost every hospital in town and take call and round on patients. And, and so if patients need to be seen emergently, you're pretty much going to have a very good chance that you'd see a comprehensive doc- doctor. You guys have had some pretty key uh, acquisitions over the last year. You acquired, uh, I think it was the second largest uh, next to yourselves, uh, Oncology Group, uh, just in December. And then prior to that, you... Uh, acquired it was it a pulmonology group the lung cancer division yeah Yeah. so tell us about why those fit within the comprehensive cancer model so we don't think of it as acquisitions as more as you know strategic partnerships or bringing on the best doctors really our model and i think what's made us successful is trying to work with the best people as far as the best doctors the best hospitals trying to work with the best people and because good things happen when you do that because you're collaborating together and that's really the story behind the lung cancer division is they've are the you know dominant pulmonologists in town that have been here the longest have a great reputation and so that we wanted to work with them and so that you know when that worked out it worked out great for us it worked out great for the patients because now patients get more integrated care yeah and so as as you probably heard last night from Dr. Parikh it's great when you're when you're collaborating you're able to just walk across the hallway and say hey I've got this patient that has this issue can I you know pick your brain on it just to be able to have that kind of collaboration and communication other than, okay, now you're going to drive from this office to that office to that office. And the more that we're able to collaborate and integrate, it's really better for the patient. You guys have put together a dream team over there. You've got uh, Dr. Volga Zhang, which, you know, world class. He could choose to practice anywhere in the world. He chooses to practice right here. Exactly. Uh, I'm a patient of Dr. Sam Lowski. Obviously, it's nice to have a melanoma guy right here in town. That's the disease that I battle. 
and to know that there's somebody right up the street nowadays is just it's, i mean but yeah i mean both of them they, they could really <laughs> practice anywhere in the world I and mean, they're very famous you know multiple well-published well-respected in, in the world and yeah. so we're very lucky in las vegas to even have the mayor let alone with comprehensive so talk about clinical trials you know you all do a, a, an exorbitant amount of clinical trials how does that fit your business model and why is that important not only to las vegas but really the entire region because that's how we improve cancer care and so <laughs> research is really the fundamental engine behind moving forward and, and curing cancer and so from a patient's point of view you don't you, you don't see it because it's baby steps is you know we're getting little advances little things coming but over time it makes a big difference and so the way that that happens is with clinical research and so we feel that it it's it's not so much a business decision as it is the right thing to do it's the best thing for the patients and you know from a patient's point of view when would you need to leave las vegas well it would be if there's a treatment that we don't have here that you need to go somewhere else for absolutely we would send you so we try to do everything we can so that the patients don't have to do that and one of the fundamental pillars of that is clinical research so by having 170 trials open for the patients they don't need to go to md anderson to get that care because we will have the same one here. And so that's what we try to do. It's amazing. So it's a lot of folks know that Las Vegas Heels is deeply behind this effort. We call it medical tourism. I think that's a bad name for it. I think it's more medical travel. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't just say, hey, I want to go go somewhere. Let me see what's out there to check things out. We go where there's great quality care. And these clinical trials attract a lot of patients here. I understand last year was around 2,200 patients mm -hmm. that came from all around the world and all around the country right here to Las Vegas. Uh, to get great quality care, comprehensive. That's enormous. It's, it really speaks for itself. And, and we've tracked our numbers of patients that come to Nevada for medical treatment to comprehensive. And I believe over the last three or four years, it, it went up about 80%. And so Huge. that's that's just you know testament to our research program, number one, to the quality of the physicians that, that are here. People will come to see Dr. Semnowski or Dr. Bozain or other, all of our great physicians to our technology, such as CyberKnife, we're getting patients from neighboring states to come to get CyberKnife treatments because That's it's awesome. that, you know, it's that good of a treatment for certain things. It really is a game changer, and we can cure early stage lung cancer with CyberKnife, and you don't need surgery. It's it's an amazing treatment. That's big. And so you also just recently expanded. You brought a residency program over to Comprehensive. Talk to us about that. Why is that important? Uh, we've had the the deans of two of the med schools on the show over the last couple of weeks, and we'll have the third dean on uh, pretty quick here. Uh, but obviously, medical education's uh, emerging in a big way in Las Vegas. We've got two new med schools coming online. Uh, we received some money from the governor to expand physician residencies. You all started a residency program over there where you've got residents rounding in internal medicine. Why is it important for that resident to get exposed to cancer and oncology, and what, what does that program look like? So I think that kind of touches base on the idea of partnerships. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this th that is a direct result of us partnering with a hospital system and saying, you know, what can we do to make things better from, from a patient's point of view and from medical ed education's point of view. We support medical education. We support the medical schools coming on board. We work with all of the medical schools. We've actually um, started scholarship programs at several of the, several of the schools, including UNLV, including Chiro, trying to support undergraduate medical education get more students to go into healthcare, into nursing, and to go to medical school. And we support, you know, UNLV and Roseman, and we want to work with them. Why? Because it's it's good medicine. It's good for our patients to have residents around. It's good for the community because then we'll have better doctors. We're, you know, I think we keep saying it over and over again, but it needs to be said that we're, you know, one of the most underserved states in the country as far as our physician to population ratio. And so, we all have to work together to solve that because we're all stakeholders. We're all patients. We're not just doctors. We're all patients here. We're Absolutely. all going to need health care, and we want to have the best doctors here. And so we're part of that. And so we want to you know, continue to do what we're doing, which is work with the medical schools as they come on board, support undergraduate education by funding things such as a scholarship program, support the actual students that are getting educated by not only taking medical students, but trying to expand the residency program because you know, oncology is a big part of, of medicine. And so if we can help provide better education to the residents by giving them a chance to work in the real world, see what we do and, and see patients, that's a good thing for everybody. Yeah. Where'd you do your residency? 
So I did my internship at Yale in Connecticut, uh-huh. oh, and nice. then I did radiation oncology in Montreal University at McGill University. Wow, so you've got international experience. Then. I do, yeah. I, I kind of went around, which was a good thing, I think, for me, as far as my education and personally, just to go different places and learn different things, How, especially in Canada. how things. So does Canada different. have better health care than us? Different health care. In okay. some ways, it's better, and in a lot of ways, it's worse. <laughs> so it depends on, on, on who you ask. The, the, we could learn things from them, and they could learn a lot of things from us. That's the way I look at it. So what was that aha moment that when you got to, were you in Montreal? Is that I was where, in Montreal. So when you got there, what was the big aha that you went, wow, that's not what I expected in the delivery of care of medicine? Well, uh, in Canada, that you have universal access. And so they didn't have the issues we had here where if you don't have health insurance, sometimes you're really in a bind because you just can't even get in to see somebody. The problem that they have in Canada is the way that the care is rationed is they don't have access to expensive like procedures. So sometimes you yeah. can't get space in the OR to get a hip replacement. Or when I was there, I was trying to order, this is a good example since I'm a cancer doctor, I was trying to order a PET scan. Mm-hmm. And when I first started in Montreal, there weren't any PET scanners in the entire city. And Montreal is about the size of Boston. It's 3 million people. And I'm like, whoa, we can't get a PET scan. So we'd have to send them to a city called Sherbrooke, which was a couple hours away. Uh-huh. And uh, that's hard for a patient to have yeah, to travel. I can imagine, hey, there's know? something really bad going on and we need to get you in for a PET scan. It's going to take a few months. Yeah. Uh, as so, a patient, you don't know what the heck's going on within your own body. You want to you know. Different challenges. So in Canada, the challenge was to try to get a diagnosis. And then once you have the diagnosis, then, then it was pretty straightforward. To, so your to plan was to, treatments. after all this, to come back to Las Vegas. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of thought about it. And the more I thought about it, I started interviewing. And I went around and, and interviewing for jobs. I realized, why would I go anywhere else? Yeah. I love Las Vegas. I grew up here, went to high school here. I went to college here. It's the best city in the world. We have great weather. We have so many things to do. It's relatively affordable for a large city. It's really a nice place to, to work and live and, and raise your family. And now we have a world-class stadium. You got to see the Killers and Wayne Newton the other night. That's that a- was amazing, yeah. So I'll give them a shout-out. Anybody that hasn't uh, had a chance to do that should be on your short list because uh, that's that's a game-changer for Las Vegas as well. It really is. Nice. You know, there's a lot going on here. It's uh, We're excited in the healthcare space. It's, uh, we had a, a group that just met before this talking about readmission. So how do we reduce readmissions to the acute setting? Uh, and, and we just started talking about just the cultural shift that's going on in healthcare. When I got here in 1993, and back then the statement of where do you go for healthcare in McCarran was, it wasn't accurate, but it was a little bit closer than it is today. Today, you don't need to go anywhere. We have every level of healthcare available right here in Las Vegas. But back then, healthcare wasn't top of tongue, top of mind. And frankly, it wasn't being discussed at the legislature. Now you look and you go, wow, we've got two new med schools coming on board. We've got expanded graduate medical education. Uh, We've got medical tourism that's starting to thrive. We've got comprehensive cancer that's just growing leaps and bounds. Uh, how exciting is that for you growing up here to watch that and be part of it? Honestly, the, that's the first thing that I felt when I came back to town. I was I was amazed at the the quality of the physicians that were practicing in Las Vegas. When I came back from my residency, I, I was surprised. I mean, I knew that we had good people here, but I didn't realize. I mean, I don't know how much people know about the medical community, but there's some pretty heavy hitter, very high power people such as Dr. Volga saying that. Yeah could be at any cancer center in the world and they're here practicing and, and, and not just in oncology and, and, and a lot of fields. And so um, it's, it's super exciting. It's, I mean, there's so many good things that are happening in healthcare and in the community. Um, Las Vegas is going to be a different city five, 10 years from now than it is now. And just in education and healthcare, it's really, really it's- an exciting time to be here. It's unique. You look at our roster, our alumni rosters, and we've got folks that trained at Yale. Yeah. We have folks that trained at Harvard, folks yeah. that trained at Johns Hopkins. And, you know, it's uh, those are world-class institutions, world-class education. They chose to move to Las Vegas. And it's probably 330 days of sunshine, great entertainment, great dining. Uh, you know, we have everything here. And a lot of people seem to think that, no, it's the, the physician base or just those that came up through the system. And really, at the end of the day, we're, uh, we probably have one of the most diverse physician groups in, in the country. Uh, living and practicing right here, and they choose to do that because of it's Las Vegas. Yeah, I'm, I feel very lucky to be here. So uh, I'm happy every day, and I'm, I'm happy what I do, and I'm lucky to, to do what I do. So, 
So what's on the horizon for comprehensive cancer centers? What do you all have planned next? You've I, Again, I've been watching you grow gangbusters. Uh, do you stop and breathe and kind of recollect, or do you have other things in the in the pipeline that you're able to talk about? You know, I, th- I think we have to take a deep breath first and, and pause and think about what we just did. We did a lot in the, in the last year, but no, we don't stop. We, we keep going. And so we can always do better. We can be, get a stronger research program, continue to bring on the best doctors, continue to invest in, in the best technology. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we'd, that we'd like to do. I'd love to have a proton center here if we could afford it. We just need about $100 million if you have. You don't have you $100 million <laughs> loose change sitting around? Not yet, no. We have to <laughs> save our pennies, though. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of really, really good stuff that we so can do. So what would a proton center do? I, I've heard that comment before. Frankly, I don't know anything about a proton center, so educate me a little it's bit on It's just a that. different type of radiation that al- that allows you to – the radiation goes into, the, into your body where the mm-hmm. tumor is, and then it stops. And so – it's really good for, for children with cancer, yep. for tumors like in the base of skull where you have a tumor really close to something that you don't want to zap. Mm-hmm. Protons can be really good for that. So it's on my, my Christmas wish list. If Santa's <laughs> listening, yeah, it'd be really So cool. is James saying, let me uh, start saving up in the piggy bank well, James for James is probably having a heart attack right now. <laughs> yeah. But um, that and, and our, you know, our collaboration. So with the two new medical schools coming on, that's going to create a lot of opportunity for everyone because you know there's going to be a, a lot more interest in, in local research and, yeah. and training and so we'll see how that plays out but we're looking forward to working with UNLV and Roseman and continuing our, our collaborations with Turo and, and Unsam yeah. and so I, I think that that's going to be probably an area of growth is to see how that all plays out. So we're coming to an end of the program. Uh, I want to thank our viewers for staying with us today. You're able to watch uh, Inside Medicine on iTunes, Roku, YouTube, Livestream.com, Stitcher, TuneIn, Chromecast, Apple, Google, and Fire Fire TV, Google Play, Twitter, Facebook, RSS Reader. So we're, we're getting a national audience now. I appreciate you being on the show. If you could go ahead and tell the audience how do they get in touch with the folks over at Comprehensive Cancer Centers. What's the website address so they could do a little bit of research and learn more about the group. Sure. So the best way to learn more about Comprehensive Cancer Centers is our website. It's www.triplecnevada.com. On our website, you can have all of our practice locations, our contact information, more information about our clinical research program, about the physicians, about the different types of treatment available. It's really just a nice resource where you can learn more if if you're interested or you have a loved one that has cancer. We can help help you fight that. Fantastic. Dr. Schwartz, thank you again for being on the show. We appreciate it. We hope to see you back soon. And thank you for everything that you're doing in the community. You guys are doing amazing work. I appreciate it. You're doing a great job yourself. And look at all you guys have done in the last year or two. We've we've, we've been a little busy. Yeah. So thank you all. And thank you for joining us here on Inside Medicine. And until next week, have a great day.